Good morning everyone, today in this video we will fight against the Admas character of our world around us and this time we will elaborate a little bit more about the meaning of one word that made within recent almost 200 years, a little bit less, incredible career. I mean the word capitalism. Many people, especially people who are a little bit interested in politics, use this word very often. It goes with all possible linguistic combinations, most likely in almost all languages that exist in the world. Yeah, some languages that are free of this are maybe the ones that are used by some uncontacted tribes in, in Amazonia uh, or some uh, small islands on Indian Ocean, something like this. But the other conducted tribes, so nations, larger or smaller, in all languages this word undergoes all possible linguistic combinations because everyone is talking about it and this word, as I said, is capitalism. But if you ask, even very educated person, even a person educated within history or social sciences, if we can call them social sciences, so I would say humanities, let's use the proper wording. So even if you talk to a person officially uh, educated within humanities and you ask this person about the definition of capitalism, you can hear many, many, many pseudo definitions and none of them actually reflects the real meaning of the word or none of them uh, tells you much or many of them tell, te tell you nothing because this is the case when something gets really quickly politicized so everyone bends its definitions to his or her current needs I found such a book, it's actually collections of the lectures given in some American uh, institutions in the second half of 1970s by a French historian uh, who is one of the fathers of the uh, economic history, Fernand Brodo. And Fernand Brodo uh, said like this, that uh, according to him, capitalists, so the one uh, who uh, creates also capitalism as a entity because I wouldn't say system capitalism is not a political system capitalist is the one who has enough of financial resources to intervene into the market and al alter the market uh, according to uh, the needs or according to the current needs this person that we call capitalist, a capitalist has. And these needs are most likely, in most cases, not so altruistic because this intervention, financial intervention, or with other goods and so on, because it doesn't have to be only money, to alter the market, in most cases, serves the purposes, serves uh, serves the profits of the person who intervenes with huge amount of goods or money into the market. And the, the example of such activity from history Mr. Brodel gives are merchants from such East Indian company, Dutch or British, or other companies, that were uh, very in a very strong connection with their powers, so here, government of England, and in the case of Dutch people, Dutch merchants, the Republic of the Netherlands. And the, they were collaborating with power to multiply their profits. But state power, I mean, that's why it's power, gave them resources and protection to run the business, Farsi trade. Because this definition of capitalist given by Mr. Fernand Brodel um, reflects the reality of the early modern era Farsi trade. But the most important in this definition of capitalist is the fact 
that the men who intervene, so capitalist, in the market uh, to gain more and more profits um, is the friend of the ones who at the same time in the uh, statehood entity where he intervenes into the market he is a friend of the ones who have power there because only this connection allow these big investments like Farsi trade or maybe not allow give them realistic chance to be successful this definition of capitalist I really like because it's purely connected with with uh, market it's not connected with politics so it doesn't uh, introduce any additional confusion like it happened for the last 130 years almost uh, about from we can count this um, time of confusion from the communist manifesto so from 1849 we still have this co confusion and we don't know actually the meaning of the one of the most important word we are using and many countries call even themselves uh, representatives of the elite of these countries call even their countries capitalistic countries but they don't know what capitalism really is that's why we should always go to the roots go to the sources and try to understand here I again I refer to my favorite Confucius we should come back to traditions follow it properly and come back to the proper meaning of the words we use otherwise there will be no communication without communication there will be no society and without society there will be no state no civilization all the best have a nice day bye